Sloss and Humphreys on the road. Muggins and cream, cream and muggins, straight thugging, living the dream. That, that's our intro. Fucking muggles. Tickling the clit inside your head to make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they said it can't be done. Are we in the same seats? That's hack. Oh, muggles. Accidental rib job in the park. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Or imagine being cynical. Just muggled it up on fucking Mugglepedia. Where have you been since 9-11? We're back. Muggins and cream forever, IDST. If, oh, God, do you remember Big that? Big heart around it. Do you remember that at the bus? IDST, F-E, F-E, forever and ever. Adidas as well. Adidas? All day I dream about sex. You put those, oh. ac- those acronyms in your Valentine's cards. Oh, those were the other off words at school you used to get was the... Uh, There's lots of countries do you, well. do you have uh, a BMW? Do you, do you Bl- want a BMW? Black, Black, Black Lives Willie. Yeah. Uh, back when you didn't really know what racism was. Yeah. Did you do that thing as well where you would dip your finger into your hand, clasp it together and go open daddy's underpants? Did you do the one where you put you get your friend's hands to is, like that? Is there a memory card in? Hi. Oh, okay. Do, uh, it's not you that set it up, it's me that set it up. Uh, do you remember the one where you get your hands like that and then you'd open it up and it looks like a vagina? Oh, yeah. I used to have sex with it. I get my friends to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I get my friends to do it and just fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> you basically get the hand drop off your mate. Uh, no, it looks like a vagina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you like, you're you're already touching a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, well, this was a, this, there's a church, there's a steeple opening up, there's all the people uh, that was quite sinister. I, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that one was, um, I think, why's daddy got it? Six dicks. Well, would you rather be a mouse or a wizard? I don't know, wizard probably. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Oh. Did you do that thing as well where you would like put one, right, cross, I'm trying to explain this because it's on a podcast. Right. You would cross your hands over, yeah. right, palms facing each other, yeah. left hand. And then, the right hand, yeah, and then, and then clasp them together and turn it round yeah. like that, and you get your friend to do that, and then you wrench down on the hand, and just pop that elbow through that socket. <laughs> just <laughs> was the most horrific. I just remember the first one where you just you did that, and then you just twiddled your fingers because it confused your because your hands were on the other sides and stuff. I'd never did the dick move. Oh, version of it. my dick move! Who did that jackpot? You just fucking pull the hands down and just fucking oh, no. all armed all day. We fucking get rushed to the school nurse. That's <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> Make her do the things with her hands. Um, I wish my hand looked like a vagina. You know, that's what gynecologists practice on before they're like to go near a real vagina. <laughs> <laughs> They do smear tests <laughs> on our friend's hands. Uh, Take swabs. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's like it's like you know uh, when they, for CPR you've got the practice uh, things. That's what their version of it is because they're underly funded. <laughs> <laughs> you can tuck your thumb in as well, make it look like a clit. <laughs> can you? No. <laughs> I was like, fuck it, I didn't know version 2.0 was out. <laughs> Proportionally, that would be a big clit. No, Apparently, no. you do get massive clits, but I've never seen one. Semi-on clit. No. No. Apparently, you get like, massive ones and stuff. I've never... <laughs> Yours is pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what people are talking about. That was easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> Girl strumming your cock with two fingers. <laughs> Oh, uh, so I was a disgrace last night. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I was a fucking disgrace. <laughs> so we're at the Melbourne uh, Comedy Festival, and uh, Fun Kai came out for the first time in a while. Oh, uh, he let his hair down, didn't he? Fuck his top off. Why shirt as a f- bandana? Crack on. Get back in there, Kai. So you we never got, left Frank the Tank. <laughs> we got drunk. Uh, you joined us later because I've been drinking with like uh, Nick Cody and Gene and uh, Lucia and all that stuff. And then you turned up. Later Been to the on. gym. No, I'll be back. I'll be back. Like, oh, I'm not going to have much. And then, and then, and then you then fell you off the stage. And then you bought some tasty shots. I did. Jammy. You, you bought me pudding. Jammy donut. Jam donuts. What even shots. is it? It didn't even it's taste like, alcoholic. It's like the cherry liqueur along with like uh, cream on top. It was, well, div- it was divine. Me, me on top. Mm. Really? Just me laying across a shot. <laughs> it really tickled my pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever call us pickle. I used to call it Jean Pickle, but neither of us can remember why. Because mm, it just clip. smells of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in a jar. Uh, Gherk, old gherkin clit Jean. Okay. No. It's a pickle, isn't it? What, a gherkin? Gherkin. What? People call gherkins pickles. What are they doing? Americans, isn't it? Yeah. It's like sidewalk and pavement and boot and trunk. Yeah. And Everyone. they call the overhead lockers on the aeroplane bins. Bin time. It's not what bin is. Nah. Be pissed off if it was a bin. You're doing bins wrong. Can you put your bag in the bin? No. Nah. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you 
tripping. <laughs> and they call it trash, 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 don't they? Maybe that's what we should call them. The overhead trash cans. Yeah. Get back to your story about you falling off the stage drunk and can't. Fuck, wait. Oh, st- it's on the, st- the stage is high. It's the hi fi. Oh, that's why it's called the hi fi. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the stage is pretty fucking big. I'm going to say, like, chest height stage. So I'm dancing, giving a big licks, fucking with me top off on the stage. <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> Who asked you to dance on the stage? Everyone on the st- uh, everyone was dancing on the stage. It everyone wasn't just was me. Just I wasn't just like these guys. <laughs> <It's> just performance. <laughs> they need to, they need some help. This <laughs> jazz band hasn't got enough movement. <laughs> <laughs> so there was like a strictly no tops policy going on 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 the stage. There was right. just someone policing it. Right. This girl was just going like, I'll get a top off, I get off the stage. There was fucking with fifty people on there, tops off. Taps and, uh, off. Taps off. So I'm um, fucking dancing taps off on the stage. It was so fucking in, in me moment mm. that I forgot I was on the stage. Just thought I was on the dance floor. And Started then. fucking, you know, how I did me backwards dancing. <laughs> 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 oh my God, I fucking spaffed it off that stage. I'm not talking about just like a little slip and my foot hit the ground. <laughs> like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> so like on your back? I think I twisted because I've got a sore hip. <laughs> My hips. Maybe maybe you were twerking too much. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> uh, that might not be related to the fall. That much is like I was twerking like it was an audition. I know the second Shakira w- w- came on, I was like, Kai's hips gonna hurt in the yeah. morning. <laughs> Kai's gonna be on the stage in a second. So there I was, fucking slut dropping, <laughs> slut, <laughs> slut dropping and slut shaming, <laughs> <laughs> slut dropping, be like, oh. Uh, I was just fucking giving a big licks to Lou Bega, fucking Mambo number five, and then all of a sudden the dance floor disappeared. I was like, oh, where's the dance floor? He did that like Wiley Coyote when he runs off the edge of a cliff, like the. Wh- like, Wiley Coyote like, freeze? <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <laughs> the proper, I held up a board in the end, and then disappeared into a cloud of uh, dust. And then he tried to run off, uh, I ran through a tunnel, but when he tried to run through it, it turns out I just painted it. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the only impressions I can do. It's the only impression I can do. Um, so I fucking spaffed it. So, but so much so that people were concerned. Fred was like genuinely concerned, and I've spoken. I got, I sent a friend uh, today. Like the concern on your face was fucking priceless. And she went, "Yeah," because the doorman was coming over. <laughs> she didn't even bother with my health. <laughs> she just didn't want me to throw it out because I was being fun. Um, well, clearly. Yeah, well, fucking the doorman just helped us up. <laughs> fucking good for me. Thank fucking. Honestly, fucking people held up points. So, you, and then and then you got put in a taxi home, two I minutes away from me. Block away, <laughs> Stanley. Like I was so fucked that Stanley called us an Uber and put us in the that's Uber. A, that's a terrible insult. <laughs> no, 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 you're an Uber. Um, <clears throat> so he got us an Uber because I was too fucked to get home. The Uber driver just took us literally up the lane and then left, and then my house was there, <laughs> like 200 feet. <laughs> 200, 200 foot How Uber. much was this? It was a limo. Um, <laughs> you just walked to the front. <laughs> on the back, walked to the front, thanks for the lift. <laughs> Stanley was like, you got an Uber back from there? I was like, I think you were the drunk one. <laughs> I wonder how much the Uber was. We'll right, he went into the tenner, he charges a tenner, he says I owe him 30 quid for drugs. <laughs> Fucking mug. Uh, you know what I did last night? You know when you um, you know when you take a pill? No, I've never done it. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know when you take a pill and then like 30, 40 minutes later, the pill hasn't kicked in. So you're like, oh, it's not working. I'm going to have another one. I've done that on purpose. Yeah. I knew it was coming. Because <laughs> every time I've done it by accident, I've felt like an idiot, but I've had a great time. <laughs> like never have I done, done double drop by accident. Yeah. Right, last night was shit. <laughs> I think I'm boring, didn't it? <laughs> Spiked I'm, yourself. I'm glad I was on drugs because I think if I felt if I took that fall sober, I'd still be in the hospital now. <laughs> I'd be in intensive care. I'm sure if you, I think if you weren't on drugs, you wouldn't have fallen off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Like so, it's it's all relative, isn't it? I would have done that anyway. Because <laughs> I, I had a plan. It was in my diary. <laughs> yeah, diary. <laughs> I'm gonna fall off the stage tomorrow. <laughs> Daniel looked concerned. <laughs> Think he likes me? Oh my god! Uh, uh, so did you feel didn't, a little... didn't stop us dancing though, did it? No, that never comes. What we said about you? No, nah. there's always dancing. Huh? I lost some. I lost some time dancing. I lost about thirty seconds. I'm going to say, but I'll, I'll claw that back. <laughs> <laughs> Day of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's leg day at the gym, so it should be easy. <laughs> a quarter out of reach. <laughs> oh, where did you go? Oh, I am. Um, pop smoke. I was just like, everyone was on like a different level, and I was just so, so drunk as well. Like, and I'd also had a big one the night before. 
So I was like, oh, I can power through this. And then at like four in the morning, my body was just like, it's bedtime. And then I come home, came home and I got really high. So you went back at four? Aye. Fuck, we stayed out ages after that. Mm. I think I might still be out. <laughs> Not gone home. <laughs> nah, I'm still on it. <laughs> so how did you stay out till then? I don't know. <laughs> Check fucking Stanley Super. Stanley Super. <laughs> <laughs> No idea. He was probably <laughs> thought he was going to be taking someone to work. <laughs> probably sure he could have just got the tram. Fuck, I don't know how I got up my stairs in my room. Did you not fall asleep in a pub? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I must have got up from them. No, oh, yeah, obviously to get back to bed. I wasn't that bad. And then uh, just had like the world's laziest fucking day today. Watched all the travellers on Netflix, which I highly recommend. It's a fucking beller of a show. I'll check it out. Uh, what are we mates? A comedian who will remain unnamed for the sake of the story. Mouth it to me. No, nah, I'll just tell you what happened, yeah. but uh, I'll tell you the name after. Uh, you might know who it is when I tell you the story. But uh, he bought he bought he bought coke in this country, which is fucking far too expensive than the fun you're going to have. Mm-hmm. It's like three hundred fifty dollars for like a gram, right? So he bought this coke because he was going to meet his friends. And his friends bailed on him, and he just went up to his room done the lot on his oh. own in a hostel. That's, oh, that's, a, that's a problem. That's the saddest night ever. And he was so chipped by the next day about like how tragic it was. He was just fucking thought it was hilarious. Oh God, I can't even guess who that is. And, uh, uh, but he said he just fucking reckons he got a cock injury. <laughs> 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 he just spent the night pulling his cock off on cocaine <laughs> in a hostel. <laughs> oh, this job is so glamorous. Oh, I, uh, no, I yeah, the dream. He's fucking living the dream. Oh. We run out of stuff to say. Have we already? <laughs> well, well, it remember, was a pretty heavy one last night. Do, do you remember that first podcast we did when you came back? It was like two hours long. We still had more to talk about. Yeah. It's been four episodes since then. I'm already bored of you. We already said each, everything to <laughs> each other. Like a married couple. Uh, we should we should have got another guest. So I do feel like we should have Katie back on the podcast, considering. Yeah, I asked him if he wanted to be on today, but he, he said next. The last one was so shit. <laughs> nah, he's just a uh, he shit, shit to do. Well, uh, tonight our plan is have a bit more weight, and then we're going to play more of the uh, Risk, The Walking Dead. Oh, now, every time we play this game, it always ends up with you and me fighting and fucking each other over. Like we just end up. Yeah, I don't know why we're so hostile to each other on the on the board. It's well, probably it, quite a formidable team. Uh, yeah, I think the thing is, right, you and I see each other as the, the biggest threat, and then what that means is we focus all our energy on the other, what the other two are then becoming bigger threats. Yeah, we just can't see each other out. Because we, tr- we don't trust each other at all. Let's because, just roll, should we just roll over them tonight? Should we do it? Should we play the whole game holding hands? <laughs> <laughs> Rolling dice at the same time. Stroking me hair when it's my turn. Do you wanna, we can do this because this podcast isn't... Uh, Gonna go until afterwards, right? And we can have Stanley next week. Should we just agree to roll through them? Yeah. You and me create an alliance right now, and then on the next episode we can talk about how badly one of us betrayed the other one. So are we going to not not attack each other at all? Or uh, I think tactically, like if it makes if sense can, to you know. So if I can move my troops out and you can gain a territory, aye. we're fucking such nerds. No, we are. Really. how nerdy we are. It's honestly, great, I was, I was the, ge- genuinely considering. In fact, maybe I have put it in Muggle Corner this week. Um. Nah, I didn't. The, I was thinking about putting it in board games. Like every, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm uh, the, the amount I'm loving it is proof of. I'm muggle as fuck. And I got talking to Stuart Goldsmith at the gig the other day and told him we got it. And he started ri- like he's banging the board games. He started riffing on all these other games we could play. And I feel like this risk games is a gateway drug into full geekdom. Mm. But um, you know what I think? I think because uh, if you get into that world of comic books and board games and stuff like that, right, there's such a big following. Like, you know, if you got, like, pretty expert at everything mm. and started doing content on it and video blogs and stuff like that, you could probably be famous in quite a big subculture. Oh, yeah, isn't that what... In, fucking... I watched... Um, there's a sad, nerdy thing I did a couple of weeks ago while I was home alone. I got high and started watching people play Dungeons and Dragons on yeah. YouTube. Full uh, three-hour sessions. Like in front of an audience. You watched a three hour game of Dungeons and Dragons? Aye. No, you watched the full thing? No, I. You can square eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the thing's thing, not like, that's just one episode. Wow. Like, that's one thing, man. Shit. And I, yeah, hate, I-, I hated how much I was enjoying it. I'm like, this is, like, if somebody walked in, I'd honestly rather they caught me, like, masturbating to something horrific. Than what? Playing, watching Dungeons and Dragons? Well, I'm just masturbating to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Uh, I don't even understand that game. I'm, uh, it's some, no way. It's, it's almost die. worrying. It's almost like something like heroin where you go, I'm never going to do it because I'll get hooked forever. I, honestly, I didn't understand the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. And then we started watching but these guys play it and I was like, 
We can pick it up, but it is the nerdiest thing, and I don't think I can ever allow myself to play it. Would you Would you love your kids to be nerds? Oh, like full I, nerds. I think they'd be easy to buy for, right? I think my dad misses like me and my dad have like the opposite story to like all the American TV shows where it's like you know how normally it's um, the dad's like a jock or something who played American football in high school, and then his uh, son is like a nerd and is like you know sensitive or wants to you know get into computer programming or whatever and it's like this big testosterone dad just doesn't understand his intellectual son right my dad's got had the fucking opposite where my dad is a fucking genius right and when i was a kid all i wanted to do was fucking play football do yeah. loads of physical activities and it's like, uh, oh, i've yeah. got so much software to download on your hard drive oh just like he is i must destroy him how bad i am with technology which i think is good is the fact that later on in life uh, when i was like 15 16 was when i started getting into like comic books and i was always into gaming so me and him could like yeah share that but when I got into comics books that's something that me and him properly love like we'll read them and then share them with each other yeah I think I'd, l- I'd like my son to be a nerd because you could like buy loads so of cool gifts him. and get him into it but I wouldn't like my daughter to be a nerd because then she'd get fucked by nerds <laughs> <laughs> can't keep that gym pool going on <laughs> like uh, I don't think, I, feel, I, feel, daughter. I feel uh, lucky that, I feel good for my dad the fact that he had Matthew my middle brother who is an utter dweeb so he's got his nerd oh he does Matthew's yeah. Took him a few rolls of the dice, but he got one. I've listened to them have arguments that I can't... Matthew is 10 years younger than me, and him and my dad are having debates about things where I don't understand a fucking word they're saying. I'm just sat there at 26 being like, guys, I occasionally smoke weed, and they're both like, we we don't find that cool. And I'm like, oh, God, (laughs) what a backwards family. (laughs) It's the opposite world. Yeah, who doesn't find drugs cool? It's the first thing you're taught. Teachers tell you drugs aren't cool, therefore... Yeah. Drugs are cool. Hey, oh, fucking Mr. Holbach knows what he's talking about. <laughs> did you that say, cool guy. Did you name drop a teacher? No, he was actually the teacher that swore, which I thought was cool at the time. But what a dick. Just swearing in front of kids. <laughs> he's just like, what would he, how would he swear to the kids? Like, I'm not that bothered about like, the idea of swearing in front of kids, because I think swear words are, but the fact that he was doing it to try and get approval. So this oh, is middle school, so it would have been about like the age of 9, 12 maybe. And you're just like the teacher is like saying fucking shit and you're just there going, Oh, he's such a cool teacher. <laughs> like a mug. Desperate mug. We had a teacher uh, called uh, Mr. McAnally and like it, that totally worked against him because he was a cool teacher. I still to this day I really liked him as a fucking teacher. Um but he came in new to the school and we was like a techie teacher, like graphcom computer programming and stuff and design. And uh he came in, he was the same, like, he would swear, he would make fun of students and, for, like, but, like, he would make fun of the cool kids, like, but to each other, like, he wanted to be part of the group. Yeah. He loved being respected, and in fact, we all found him hilarious, but then, like, he lost all the fear that he, they need to have to have any control, so one day I had, like, Quake 3 on a USB drive, and I just installed it on all the computers and the thing, and he just walked into 16 of us playing this online. So so they took advantage of him. Right, and he was just oh. like, everyone get off the computers, and we're like, you have not, like... And he just sat. He just was like, "Get on the teacher." We're like, "We're mate, we're we're playing this." So if, you, if the teachers, if other teachers come in, I'll get fired. We're like, right, "You stand outside, like in prison break." Let's <laughs> 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 know when they come. You're the bitch now. I made him walk down the corridor, <laughs> like hold my pocket, <laughs> put him under tension. <laughs> he gave me lines, and then I made him do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do you know I got a uh, detention once for? Um, I was it was when our computer we first got. Uh, computers now at school in my last year of school. Cause I'm pretty old, okay. and um, I remember getting on the internet and um, looking at a picture on Rob Celebs. Remember that website, Rob Celebs? This is an archive of celebrities before you could really like stream porn. Oh, right, okay. pictures. Yeah. Right, and I was on Rob Celebs. And I got a picture of Jenny McCarthy up, mm-hmm. and um, my mate come along and just fucking hit control and pay. <laughs> fucking printed a picture of Jenny McCarthy's tits right next to the teacher. <laughs> Like the printer on her desk. I print on her desk. <laughs> I remember it was Mrs. Faith. I thought it was Mrs. Faith. Come over and she was like, Hi, what do you call this? And I just pretended I like I was like, Oh, that's fucking nice. <laughs> she asked Miss. <laughs> and I needed that. <laughs> She got her suitor for sexual harassment being like, mate, you'll never guess what she did. <laughs> She's just going around showing her students like pictures of nudes. <laughs> this isn't the days before mobile phones. So this I, I miss, I'm trying to concentrate on my work. <laughs> Can you sign them for me? <laughs> Get us a coloured one. <laughs> Put it down in colour. 
So, um, I remember I had one teacher as well, uh, IT teacher in Ridley High School, uh, used to always come in, uh, probably well groomed, like his hair nice, and he had aftershave on and all that. <laughs> And like at the time, I just remember I'm being pretty slick, oh. but I'm like, was he on the ball? We had um, a teacher called Mrs. Lee, and she was a and she was a teacher of computing and stuff. But like for somebody who was teaching computing, she was not great at computing. The way we'd get cl- uh, class off, obviously all work has to be done on the computer. So what we'd do is just take a screenshot, like. Uh, screenshot of the desktop background, right? Put the start button down, the start bar down, delete all of the uh, actual icons and put that as the wallpaper and be like, Miss, none of the things are open. Uh, <laughs> it took three of the school's technicians to work out what we'd done. Just, just clicking a picture. Just, just clicking a picture and then she had the technicians come up and be like, well, it must be a virus because it's on every computer. Oh, God. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Oh. Yeah. Uh, right, should we go into the Muggle Corner? Should we stick it to some Muggles? Right. So for the, any new listeners uh, to the podcast... Uh, hey, Leah, Leah Cody, uh, Nick Cody's sister, big fan of the podcast, shout out to Leah. Oh, uh, yeah. Says we need to stop um, describing what Muggle Corner is. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she reckons that if people can't understand what we're talking about in context, they're Muggles. Oh, well, that's fair. So if we just talk about it in context, people will get the context. All right, fucking And then they're on board for the next one. All right, grand. Well, let's go into first Muggle Corner then. I'll go first. Uh, muggles... You know, muggles make you say please. And you'd be like, oh, can you pass us the salt? Please. please. Oh, fuck oh, you. muggle off. Keep the salt. I haven't muggled one of that much. You know what I mean? You're going to make us beg. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not your slave. Like, I understand it's, you know, rude not to. But sometimes it does just slip people's minds. Like, yeah. it's the same thing with, like, you're welcome. I'll take the thank you I didn't give you back. Uh, like, didn't, didn't say thank you. What am I welcome for? Yeah, the Dan, who I live with, Dan Willis, uh, kept making me say pardon me after I fought. Oh, yeah, he was but like, you know, just pardon me. I'm like, what? I, I'm not going to ask for a pardon now. I've already done it. I should say pardon me, and I fought. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, you probably wouldn't say yes. <laughs> so that's why I did it without, your, that's why I did it without your permission. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than <laughs> to ask for permission. It really is. You fucking, I fought a lot. Oh, and it's not good when you fought though. I was thinking if we just fucking saying pardon me once, putting it on my iPad on a little button. Just fucking press pardon me on the iPad, just sick of saying it. Just use that finger to shove up your ass and stop farting. <laughs> <laughs> Never, because then I'll get poo on my iPad. <laughs> It's the only way it recognises your thumb. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I, d- I don't know why I'm saying, I'm saying pardon me after, after a fart. Yeah, but your farts are absolutely barbaric. Like, yours, like, look, farts are meant to smell, right? They smell. All farts smell. No farts smell good. But yours are concerning. Like That's why I went and got my insides washed. D- and it's not helped. You farted the other day and it, was, it made it worse. Just came back with a vengeance. I think it's the protein. I mean, even when you're, like, not healthy, they fucking... Like, I think you're dying inside. Well... You must have... As long as on the outside, I'm gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I've got terrible news. <laughs> <laughs> you just diagnosed me ugly. <laughs> I'm dying. That didn't necessarily mean ugly. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I can't remember who did it to me the other day, but it was just, I was seething with rage, just that. Because it was just such a flyaway thing. It was Like, I'll ask for a big thing if I'm like, oh, mate, can I, can I borrow 50 quid, please, just for the time being? Right, yeah, I'll say please then. But it was literally something like, oh, can you pass us a fork? Please. Oh, fucking don't have me. I'm going to stab it in your fucking neck. Like, it. forcing manners that you, yeah. like, you're assuming that you're a role model, like, you're someone that gets yeah. to instill Because I think you've got, to, you've got the right to have disdain for the person that does that. Mm. Uh, see, if someone has, think they had bad manners, they can go, oh, fucking, he's a bit of an obnoxious oh. twat. You can have them thoughts, but, like, to then try and educate them, like, oh, yeah. like you're a mentor. Yeah, because I think it comes from that thing of, like, you're always taught that by your parents and actual authority figures, right? Those are the ones that are meant to instill it in you, right? They're like, say please, say thank you, say this, and that's what they do. But sometimes you just fucking forget. And then some cunt who's the same age as you is trying to mum you. Yeah. You go dad yourself. It'd be better if they just don't pass you the salt. <laughs> you pass just, the salt. Or, or, or nah. if, you, if, if, you de- <laughs> nah, if you if you deem that I've been rude by asking for the salt, just don't chuck the salt at me. Just, yeah, just go and get it yourself. Uh, right. That's what I tend to do. 
you're getting Help. yourself. You're closest to it anyway. <laughs> I don't know why I have to get up, come all the way to that end of the but table. I, but I want you to do it. <laughs> Please. Uh, are you, are you, do you agree? Yeah, Please. Let's, let's straight in because I was fucking proper victim to it. Pardon me. Say pardon me after you fart. Also, oh, like, pardon me doesn't come after. Pardon me comes after burps. I slow clap after I fart. <laughs> Sarcastic. Say pardon me after a bib. I oh, guess your bib smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's, no, it's always part of me for being so rude. It was not me. me it, it was, was my food. It just come up from down no, no, it just came up to oh yeah, just come up to say hello and then it's come back down below. I wouldn't say part of me for farting. I if you did stood on your head, <laughs> it comes up to say hello. I know, but even then I wouldn't. Mm. So if you're and stood on your head, you oh, you're fine. Just come down fine. To if you're farting mid cartwheel. Right. right, you can say pardon me then, but the rest of the time just say sorry or better yet, don't fucking do it. It's disgusting. We just we don't make the rules. They're just there. Um, I mean, you can not fart. Yeah, but then I just start blowing up and float off. <laughs> I do, I just they seen the size of us when I've held a fart in for a while. No. I blew it up. <laughs> I just mainly run the gut. People think you're pregnant. <laughs> it's a poo baby. P- I shouldn't fart on people. Yeah. It is mean. D- yeah. It's like you, a mean thing to do. You do do that a lot. We do it to each other a lot. Yeah. Farting on each other. Man, it I've is funny. fart so much when we had phones on as if people can't hear it. <laughs> Man, I'll just be like in the gym. I do the same, but without my headphones, I just put my fingers in my ears whenever I'm about to do it. <laughs> la, 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 la. Do you fart in the gym? Because I can't. That's... I then point at a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the phone on my shirt collar. T shirt collar. Oh. But there's oh. only, only two of you in the gym. It's just you and the <laughs> You just fart and point at him. Be like, Mink, but say sorry. <laughs> Uh, who was it Cody on the podcast with when you were talking about I make noises in the gym Hi. do I ever yeah I make fucking noises in the gym because I go to a gym now where people make noises Hi. so I'm just like game on <laughs> take <Same> competition <laughs> take playing bogeys <laughs> someone's like oosh and I'm like oosh <laughs> but you're just getting water <laughs> <laughs> doing stretches uh, oh, I can't stand the fucking noises you make it's just it should be silent it's rude I think any unnecessary noise that you inflict on another person is rude, and that's what I consider. What do you think this podcast is? <laughs> no, no, but they've chosen. They've chosen to listen to this. Like, if I was to just blare this out the window, it's like people that play music too loud, right? Yeah. We all agree that's fucking rude. Taxi drivers that talk to you, it's fucking rude. I did not get in here for a conversation. But uh, then again, I also feel aware that I tried that bit on stage once, and turns out a lot of people... Talk to taxi do, driver. Yeah, and enjoy it. People are like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just a piece of shit. I was chatting to a taxi driver who listens to the podcast, too, and he was like, "Now I'm really self-conscious when I talk to me like punters, but mm. it's just a done thing." It's he just had to tell him to be like, "No, nah, cream's just a bag of shit." Yeah, it's too true. Um, so it's like, in the corner. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. in the corner. I'm sure I had something to add there with the. Oh yeah, um, what you just said there about um, people play music on in public transport out the phone, like they're proper muggles. Aye, right, and cunts, and cunts, right. But if anyone's listening to this podcast that is in Muggle Corner for that specific thing, even though this wasn't what, what we put yeah. forward, have we put it forward before? I don't think so. Oh look, you get a bonus Muggle right. for playing music. That's fully in. But if you are that person, go in the corner, think about what you've done. But next time you do it, put a podcast on. <laughs> Play a podcast on the bus. Right. If you're gonna be a dick, at least be a dick advertising what we're doing. Yeah. Just make them hate us as well right. as you. Make make some new friends. Um, so I'm going to put uh, this in Muggle Corner. Um, people that use the coloured background on the status. Oh, what it, is that? It's so because you're so, uh, it's to draw you in, right? Because you're so used to if you see something in coloured or something that's had a little, a little bit of work done on it to mm. produce the image, yeah. then it's usually something worth seeing because someone's took the time out to put that quote on a backdrop. Oh, but yeah. now you can just do it at the click of a button. People are telling you what they had for dinner, but you're drawn in by the coloured backdrop as if it's going to be something good. It's like a new bit of like self-marketing. Yeah, like, and I, I, I've just been drawn to and read so many mundane, inane, fucking gash statuses. I don't understand how you do it. Huh? I don't understand how you do it. Oh, by the way, this also includes anyone that, uh, as always, the joke was funny for an hour and then it got repeated. People putting up status, coloured statuses, being like, "This does not make your status look more interesting." Yeah, uh-huh. you're like you're also. I know you you're did doing that ironically, it. but you did. Yeah, it. part yeah. of the problem. So um, I always feel like it's like um, you know when you've got a fox's biscuits and one of them's foiled wrapped. Mm-hmm. It's like unwrapping the foil and find out it's a rich tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're just like, oh, th- this has been fucking. This this has been packaged up. Oh. It's like shaking a package and being like, oh, it's an Xbox, and you open up and it's a dead puppy. <laughs> <laughs> It, um, 
yeah, them, them started as well. Do you know, when I, on the topic of the foil wrap biscuits, mm. do you know Gav actually sent a letter to Foxes? Did he? Complain about the foil wrap biscuits being no different to the other biscuits in lure into a false sense of anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Gav. He did have been funny when he was high. Guy. Yeah, yeah, this isn't Gav. Oh, you know, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, you got to have a serious word with your brother there. No, he didn't. Like, he jokingly done it. I think like, emailed them, but it was um, the same as like what I said last week about his mm. phone in the pizza shop and thanking right. them for the pizza. It was just one of them funny ideas that you have when you're high, yeah. when you actually commit to it. And uh, they actually got back to him and just said that they've got a high standard for all of their biscuits. So if it's the same as the other biscuits, that's a compliment. I meant that was. <laughs> <laughs> it got marked. <laughs> Did I tell you, when I was, uh, I was about 13 years old, 13 or 14 years old, I won a competition on uh, Nickelodeon. I won a portable DVD player. Did you? Right? So, but, but how I won it is, like, I always thought that they check the emails, like, the winning emails before, like, before they read it out turns out on Nickelodeon it's it genuinely is random oh. right because the one I sent in they was like just send us in your move, movie review right and I was just I was 13 years old I was bored of my fucking mind I was just like I'm just going to fuck with them so I sent through one that was like uh, my movie review is of 101 Dalmatians because I think I've just been made to watch it and I was obviously if you thought I was angry now I was an angry teenager yeah. I was like uh, we just watched 101 Dalmatians it was boring it was uh, shit I genuinely wish all those 101 dogs could fit in a blender, right? And then just sent through like a joke email, and then like so I'm just watching Nickelodeon while I'm playing fucking World of Warcraft. And I'm turning around, and uh, they're like, "And our uh, winner today is from uh, Daniel Sloss up in uh, Fife in Scotland." He says, "My movie review is of uh, 101 Dalmatians. I wish all of those dogs could." F- oh, okay, well, congratulations, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Live on area to bail out of the bit. <laughs> and then you want a DVD player and Aye. fucking went straight and bought 100 more Dalmatians. I watched it on repeat. Loved the movie. Turns out I was wrong. <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, it's not that great. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a book of 101 Dalmatians? I don't think so. No? What about the Aristocrats? Cats. Aristocrats? Aye. Is there any books of Disney movies? Uh, Sleeping Beauty. See, that's some of them I've books. Snow White, like, yeah. Jungle Book's a book, Aye. isn't it? Aye. Hence the name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, what snakes in a plane about? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> oh. Is there a book of the Book of Mormon? Oh, there is the Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking. I am a terrible form. <laughs> you are thick oh, cunt. I am swinging without a bat. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What was your original muggle corner to try and save you from this? <laughs> Clinical on your status. Oh, yeah. Oh. How'd you do it, though? Like, I'm not going to do it, but... What you do, right, it comes up like a, there's just loads of coloured icons at the at the bottom. So you type your status, just click on the coloured item icon the same way as you would, like, tag a friend or, like, right. whatever you do. And then you just hit, click the colour, and then you go and have a bath and wash yourself clean. Because <laughs> you feel dirty. <laughs> have a sit down shower. You feel so dirty that you've got to go and scrub yourself until your skin bleeds. All right, and then after you're done doing that, go sit in the fucking corner. You clean muggle bastard. And when I saw someone do a passive aggressive uh, status, like uh, some people need to fucking mind their own business and all that, <laughs> but they fucking colour back with them, like. Man, I honestly think, like, I think you and I must have a different Facebook experience from each other, right? You know how, like. Because well, I've got friends from Blind. <laughs> I, like, you know how men and women have different Tinder experiences? Like, my experience from Tinder is by and large a lot of. A good, right? I've met a lot of cool people from all over the world. I've had a bunch of really nice sex, and I'm still friends with like a lot. And it's a good dates me all these great chicks, and then I'm going jean Tinder, and I'm just like, oh, this must be fucking atrocious for you, <laughs> like a new level of hell. Oh, it's just like it's just like sexual abuse in your pocket. Like it's it's like it's, people manage to put like four builders inside of your iPhone, <laughs> oh, God. and they just wolf whistle. Oh, um, but yeah, like. Because I'm friends with like mainly comedians and like some people I went to school with because my school was wasn't really middle class but it's like it's, it's a no fucking blithe like all the stuff you tell me about that's going on Facebook when you're like oh these people are being like oh these people need to mind their own business I've never seen a status like that in my really? life I've oh, man. never seen oh, it I can guarantee one every time I go on Facebook I've, uh, th- I get, that, that I get small s- town I get it's got some, so much charm I get some statuses that are like you know I've got friends with a lot of your blithe mates and yeah. some of those are you know Poorly spelled and weird, but yeah. I, I find them endearing. I, I like but it when I'm just getting your good ply friends. I like it when my friends put like on the end of sentences on Facebook. 
just to tell like you what to the, do. The way you do, like the huh. way you talk, like. They'll, but they'll write it. They'll type it. Because uh, when when I say like at the end of stuff, Aye. it's like a, it, it's almost like a tick. Yeah, I don't. I like, don't say yeah. It's the same I way. Don't I know I'm doing it, but if I'm typing it, I know I'm typing it. Aye, when I'm rather when, not. When I'm typing it, I'm not. I'm not going air eh, or oh, air eh, or yeah, I just um, I just watched Logan today. That uh, what's his name? Fucking oh, uh, yeah, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Aye, he was meant. Yeah. What a good Wolverine. Hey, Jack Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Colored states is getting the corner. Yep, my next one is, uh, and I'm gonna. Ugh. Michael's watch early morning chat shows. Mm. Like I've, I never catch them because I'm always in bed. But like, and I, and I should add on to this. Uh, I'm throwing someone I love under the bus, Lorraine Kelly. Yeah, I love Lorraine Kelly. I've never made that a secret. I've got the biggest crush on her. I think she Have you is. met her, aren't you friends with her daughter? I, very weirdly, like a couple of years ago, like when I was like 19 or, oh, I think I just turned like 21. And uh, I've, I've fancied Lorraine Kelly since I was about 13 years old. And, uh, so you got a strange crush, like no reason why not. No, no, but it's, I think it's because my gran used to watch her show all the time because my gran's a fucking muggle, right? And I'm watching it. She reminds you, yeah, gran. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I just watched it. I just I, I, like she's funny. She's smart. She laughs all the time. Which is she, she's fucking fit, mate. And uh, then like in an interview a couple of years ago when I was twenty one, they were talking about like are you in a relationship? And I was like, nah, nah, I'm I'm single. I'm not really looking for a relationship uh, right now. But my ideal woman is Lorraine Kelly. But I know she's married, so I wouldn't do that to her. But she does have a. I know she's got a daughter. Uh, and uh, apparently daughters grow up to look like their mums so I'll just hedge my bets there and just meet her daughter and this is before I knew how to interview I'm just talking out loud and the guy printed it out in a big newspaper in Scotland and I get, end up getting a tweet uh, from Lorraine Kelly's daughter being like I'm okay with this and then Lorraine Kelly privately messaged being like thanks for saying such lovely things about me I'm like oh that's amazing that's fucking amazing <laughs> which to me just made me fall more in love with her because I'm just like she was so nice about this creepy 21 year old being like I want to rattle you and your daughter <laughs> <laughs> for you yeah and, uh, yeah because we went to the gym once in Edinburgh and you yeah. ended up like chatting to someone on the stairs and I was like who was that and you just randomly I oh, was Lorraine Kelly's daughter it was the first time, I'd, first time I'd met her like after like four years of Never met her before, and she was just like, "Oh, Daniel." I was like, "Oh, oh seriously?" So you hadn't spoken before, before then. Ne- Fuck you two, hit it off. Aye, well, yeah, soulmates. You were probably shooting the breeze. Aye, soulmates, mate. And gas enough like third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do love the ring, but so that's why I feel bad about like I understand why the shows exist. Like, they're it's not my demographic, but that's what I mean. Like, the demographic it is. Are all muggles. I'm not saying Lorraine Kelly's not the best at her job, and she's not a beautiful angel, which she is. Yeah. And Same goes for you, Philip Schofield. Oh, <laughs> Bay. Go- gorgeous, gorgeous man. Piers Morgan, you can fuck off though. Uh, but yeah, like the Piers Morgan's thing. People were like, why would you ever want to know what Piers Morgan's opinion is on anyth- anything? Yeah, well, I, I just think with that um, chat show thing, in a world where you, you can watch whatever you want, whenever you want. Yeah. To be force-fed food. Force-fed food. <laughs> force-fed television like that. Yeah. Like, you just Not get up force-fed, you you've just it, chosen to do it yourself. It's like time-killer television. Yeah. It's like when you get up and you know you've, you, you, don't, you don't have to go to work that day and that's the type of TV show that's on, right? Yeah. So people have got, like, the day off. Well, that's what you're going to do with the day off. Right. So you're going to do with but maybe when I'm you're on night shift, and that's what you're going to do with your time when you're in the house. But maybe it's, now that I think about it, maybe it's just their version of brain chewing. Because I always play FIFA or watch Friends. That's my brain chewing gum. Uh, um, a refreshing Facebook. Yeah. Like I, I, I hung over today. I couldn't face anything. I couldn't pick up a book. I couldn't huh. do anything. And I just like ghosted Facebook for about fucking hour and a half. I'm sorry, all your muggle corners on Facebook based things today. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But I still think it's it's a very muggly thing. Like, because there's always like there'll be some story in like the newspaper, like of someone who's not a, even a celebrity news is already fucking boring. What they'll do is they'll be like, so this local man did this thing today and he's come on the show to talk about it. Dave, I heard you grew some very large tomatoes. Oh, that's right, I did, Catherine. They're a much larger, like, what do you, what, who's what, why? Showing photographs of the tomatoes. Oh, tomatoes? <laughs> bin. Put your tomatoes in the bin. Right. Tomato. Toma- what? Tomato. Is tomato. tomato how Americans say it? Tomato. You say tomato, I say tomato. Oh, did I say it right? I'm just high. Aye. No. Yeah, I just heard it like you're saying it American. Oh, no. Tomato. I, can't, I don't know how I say it. How do you say tomato, it? Tomato. 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 Tomato, yeah. Tomato, you said. Tomato. Yeah, I'd say tomato. You're going to say tomato? I might, I might do. Is that the age-old question? What, depends what you I'm You say tomato, I say tomato. No, the age Yeah, which came first, the tomato the tomato? I think it's tomato. And the thing is, we can't ask Twitter, because we'll be like, which one do you think it is? And we'll just type it out. Type <laughs> tomato. <laughs> Fuck! We should do a... We should do a... How do you pronounce it? 
tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, maybe we don't need to have just done the joke. Probably got the same reaction. So that Muggle Corner is watching daytime television? Yeah, I just, I, look, I understand like what people watch it, but it is just my place. It's one of those things I've done it. But just, who gives a fuck? Yeah, I used to like get Netflix. There's so much good shit on it. I used to like uh, Big Breakfast. Aye. Even when I was a kid. What was that one? Remember the episode in Amsterdam when I told you I wrote in? Aye. Did yeah. I tell you? It was one episode where I wrote in Big Breakfast and I read it out. Yeah, to Vince. What? Vince. It was uh, Vinnie Jones and Jenny McCarthy mm. who I got printed out in the fucking IT. Oh, thing. aye. Gen- we fucking <laughs> Small world. <laughs> we've, got, we've got history. <laughs> we've got previous. <laughs> Uh, Jamie but, McCarthy and Vinnie Jones fucking make this what's your next one my next uh, trip to Muggleville will be for the heinous crime of bringing the keeper out on FIFA <laughs> when it's not the end of the game oh I love that oh it's so <laughs> muggly you're like 13 minutes in the fucking keeper comes up for a corner you're like oh man it's so hack the reason, I, the reason I do it is if I'm ever two goals ahead of someone and I know I'm beating them I'm bringing that keeper out every chance because it makes them panic as well like because at that point what they want to do is just shoot, but if you shoot from that far out, you fucking miss. Yeah, and it's also like a little bit of a, like, it takes the seriousness off the game. It totally does. You're having a serious game, and then the keeper, it's 1 1, and the keeper comes out on the fucking <laughs> 20 minutes. I'd love to see that happen in real <laughs> and life. You just think, oh, but now whoever wins, it's a joke. <laughs> but was, do you know, like, it'd be funny. Remember when, like, fucking uh, Germany beat uh, Brazil 8 1? Like in that, uh, yeah, cup. when we, we so were I think it'd be funny it. if, like, five nil down, like, just randomly, so you just saw the fucking German goalkeeper oh, man. Just, just fucking splitting that, up the pitch that would be, and throwing in horrific tackles that for would no be reason. Such bad sportsmanship, <laughs> but it would be fucking brilliant television. Yeah, it would be brilliant television if you fucking 60th minute you're winning, you're keeping up for a corner. <laughs> just oh, proper man. thing, man. It would take over the internet. It'd be great. Do you want your day, but they're just going to get called all the fucking names under the sun. Uh, I bet you so there for the sportsmanship. You're, you're admitting it's funny, so therefore, how is it Michael when I do it? It's, uh, it's funny when people, like, when something funny's happening and people really like, get on the high horse about it because it, it is bad sportsmanship or whatever. Right. Like, you know, the Newcastle fans getting, like, totally slated by other Newcastle fans. Do you know what they did? Yeah. They started, uh, they started a crowdfund. To hire a plane to fucking fly a banner saying fuck off Sunderland over Stadium of Light. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was fuck off Sunderland, but it was something of the likes about oh. them being relegated. Oh. So on the, the day where they get relegated, the fucking plane's gonna fly with a big banner over Wait, this, they're Light. doing it? They're, they're not doing it because they got the, when the, the crowdfunder started doing well, mm. it started the more wider public heard yeah. about it and started absolutely panning them. Like other Newcastle fans were like disassociating themselves with the idea and ended up giving the money to charity. Oh. But I was like, well, I guess ah, that's decent enough. It, yeah. And that, I'd see what the fucking right on people are getting at. Like, if you're going to raise that money, you don't fucking blow it when there's oh, yeah. problems in the world. Oh, yeah. but funny, though. Pretty fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a, have you seen the um, picture? I don't know if it's true, if it's photoshopped. I hope to God it's true. But it's just a guy in a plane, and it's got that banner at the back. And it goes, and it just the banner says, Where's your plane, you fucking peasant? <laughs> 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 I'm like that's amazing like if I was on the beach and I saw that I'd be like that is hysterical I would love seeing that from my jet <laughs> <laughs> someone flying by in a private jet can you're playing shite <laughs> oh the other good one was again I think it was photoshop but it did make me laugh is uh, you know the sky writers yeah it was just one of them got bored and just wrote how do I land <laughs> oh nice <laughs> That's got to be Photoshop, right? But I hope. Well, no. how many can you write before it starts dispersing? Uh, it depends on how windy it is, I reckon. So you just got like, a couple of letters in and then... Right. But no, you can, you can do like, like I love you, Lorraine Kelly and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll stay there for a bit. I've started a crowdfunder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get to fly over home. <laughs> going to get to tattooed on my back. Yes. If you are listening, Lorraine Kelly... For it to look at when she's pegging you. <laughs> <laughs> if you are listening, Lorraine Kelly, one... I don't want to be pegged. <laughs> but if you're interested. But I do it for you. <laughs> um, uh, I'd love you to get pegged by Lorraine Kelly. I'm not. I'd cook all you. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait. If she was pegging me, does that mean you're my husband in that situation? <laughs> like you're the one being cuckolded. If Lorraine Kelly's fucking me, uh, yeah, yeah. you're the cuck. Yeah. yeah. That's how you'd cuckold you. No. You, you're I'd the, be the cuckold. No, the cuckold's the one that does it. The one that watches? Yeah, I. Yeah, I'd be there. Oh, no, I'd, be, I'd be in the cupboard. No. Watching the rain. Can we peg the shit out of you? Fucking you show him. Spit on him. 
Oh. I'm going to disagree. I'm not going to let this go in the corner. Okay. Because I, I love it. It but is just a... I do, a, it's a, I do feel like, a, like an old man when someone does it. They're like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Kids these days, back in my days, you used to have respect on FIFA. Oh. <laughs> back oh, back in my day, you couldn't bring the keeper out. Good old days. It's not going in. You're safe if you bring the keeper out. You're <laughs> you go in the legend corner. <laughs> You think people think like you are a legend? <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I think it's so hilarious. Lame. I think it's hilarious. It's almost so lame. It's funny again. No, it's it's like, only funny because it's lame. It's like teabagging someone. <laughs> teabagging like a cop to your halo. That's never not funny. The only time it's not funny is when it's happening to you. But tea. <laughs> what about what about one of the when proudest you? I've ever been in my life? Right, was when I was playing my younger brother Matthew at like Halo, and he was shit, but he was getting into games, and he. Killed me, and I just I mean, we're all sitting around the same TV playing it, and he killed me. And he's like nine years old at this point, and he just runs up and teabags me. And me and my dad are in absolute fucking uh, bits. You can't reprimand that. So you think it's always funny? Aye. Like cupcaking someone. It's not us. No, no. I tried to win it back. Pardon? <laughs> Say pardon. <laughs> pardon me for suggesting cupcaking you. Well, the other one, uh, um, I think it's hard to, as a dad. To, like I, I love my dad so much. I think me too. Of, for, <laughs> well, <laughs> but in, in different ten, ways. Right, but in 10 minutes you could be saying some pretty mean stuff about him, so I don't think that's true. <laughs> flitting. No. Hitting's flitting. I'm treating him mean, keeping him keen. <laughs> I think it's hard like, for my... Like, he's, a, he's a fucking great dad, but like uh, he never... But he's not a great granddad. <laughs> He's uh, like it must be a difficult situation where your kids are being funny, but you know you have to reprimand them, and he was yeah. never good at it. Like this one time we were at uh, the cinema, and we were all there. And Jack, my youngest brother, must have been about five or something. So Matthew was seven or eight, and some about fifteen. And uh, oh no, I must be about seventeen. I'm there with my dad and mum, and Jack's just discovered his zipper. But all he's done is put his finger down his pants. And he's put his finger out. He goes, look, there's my Willie. And he's five years old. And he's doing this in a public place. And he goes, show us, show us my mum. And she's like, oh, she's like, Martin, talk to him. And me and, him, and my dad and Matthew just turn around. And we're just all in fucking pits. <laughs> and this five-year-old who's worked out, you can pretend his finger is a cock. And just five, four men just like, well, my mum's just positive like. Positive reinforcement. Oh, I could never get him to stop that. Yes. It's funny when he got his actual dick out. <laughs> I was, I'll tell you what Because he didn't mind sucking his finger <laughs> <laughs> I knew he'd taken it too far When I was eating the popcorn And I put my hand down there And his finger was sticking out the bottom <laughs> <laughs> His finger in the popcorn <laughs> He's pretending his finger is his dick But he's really committed to it <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how the rain Kelly's going to peg you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I, but I'll fool her Because what I'll do is I'll turn my hand into the hand vagina thing <laughs> Put it between your legs. It's just a really elaborate handshake. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually still not on first base. <laughs> we've, we've, really... we've only held hands. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. uh, muggles. Muggles listen to radio. Like outside of the car. Mm-hmm. Right. I started. Okay, okay, let me specify further. Not music radio. That's background noise. Like radio four, people talking. Yeah. Like oh, then again, I, I've never found the appeal. But when or like I radio plays, them, I start because I I never read the news mm. and I never watch the news because I'm never watching television. If I, I do, it's a Netflix. Don't want to spoil it for yourself. Um, I'm just waiting to go have a big old catch up when the other bus is on. <laughs> I started too late. I don't know what's going on. To be honest with you, <laughs> you can't just jump oh, in any time. Fuck, you got to start on episode one. <laughs> episode one of the news. <laughs> fuck, see, I was coming. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I'm gonna write some jokes about this. Sweet about it. <laughs> Be topical. <laughs> <laughs> So I found um, <laughs> the radio app on my iPhone and uh, just started, like, when I go out for my runs, mm. listening to them. 
<laughs> radio. The radio, we listen to the news because <laughs> I thought it might be a good way of duality purpose. I'm running anyway. I like when I'm cooking, when I'm like making me breakfast or whatever. I listen to the news, but uh, the only reason I stopped was because the Wi Fi in fucking Australia is gash. Oh, the Wi Fi in what this country the is. What the fuck is going on with this country? I don't understand. It's so ahead of the t- everything, it's oh. ahead on everything. But well, Wi Fi is third world. I mean, it's definitely not ahead in gay marriage. Oh shit, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> actually, fucking. Yeah, you've accidentally pretty, just. Pretty backward, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and refugees are bad about. Did I tell you this about them? Um, you know how they've got um, water coolers Aye. on every corner? Mm-hmm. They've just like got drinking fountains. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking great idea. And I like, because well, I go for jogs quite a bit, fucking stop and have a drinking fountain. And I said there was one of the barmaids of Pedro O'Brien's in Adelaide. I was like, oh, I can't believe there's water, like, water fountains in this country. Because in the UK, if they had water fountains on every corner, they'd be your rhinos. Yeah. Like by day one. Yeah. And she was like, you don't drink out of them, do you? People piss them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're drinking loads of piss. So, what, what are we talking about? Radio. Like, radio. radio plays and stuff. Like, I've just... Yeah, I've never found the appeal. Like, I, and as well, even when some of my friends get, like, radio shows shows commissioned, mm. like, I'm, I'm excited for them. Oh, I'm like, oh, that's great pretty, for them. pretty cool. But even though they're my friends, I, I've got no... Even oh, though I'm I want to hear that it. work, yeah. I just don't know. I, I, I've never, like, followed a link and listened to any of the radio shows. They might be good. I really like, think so. I don't know. I don't know how you would use. I reckon Ivan Brankbury had one. I reckon that might must have been good because he's yeah. fucking great. Do you reckon I'll, if radio was less pedestrian, if like they could just put podcast style content? Well, that's what it is. How, how good would the radio be if you listen to someone's MDMA stories? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's what I think. That's, that's why I just think it's a bit muggly because we've come because on you've a got podcast. The podcast. Yeah, you can choose what you listen to. Where you just you're being t- with radio. It's the same thing with watching early morning TV. Yeah. You, you're literally being told what to watch and you're being told what to listen to uh-huh. when you've got all this fucking library of stuff yeah that's why like I'll, I'll not watch TV because I can download or stream whatever mm. I want to watch so I never like, watch the program like, program I feel like the only books you read were ones that people like yeah you got to deliver your, your door. door randomly uh huh yeah, that, that's weird, isn't it? That, like, mm. books is the only thing that it's gets away with that. Like, this is your reading for the day. Yeah. Oh, newspapers. Essentially, what it is like, it's muggle. Yeah, it's muggly to not want a choice. Yeah. Uh, so you can. It's it's pretty much the same thing in that case as the daytime TV. Aye. So, but like, let's double down and have aye. sixty minutes, sixty seconds in the corner. Aye. Get back in the corner, you muggle. Yeah. Right, what's your final one? Is it the final? What's, what's your one? final form? Um, my final one is um, people that tell comedians jokes. Aye. It's uh, it's so excruciating. Aye, like even if the joke's dynamite, they put such a level of expectation on you because they're about. To, and as well, anybody that says, "Oh, here's the here's a joke," Aye. and sets up the joke, I say that I don't know. I could be quite good. I, I do like a long form joke sometimes. Yeah, but I not just, when not when it's under the context of, "Oh yeah, comedian, here's one for you." Yeah, it is also like I've heard so many jokes, and you got to understand like normal jokes really don't make me laugh anymore. Like old pub jokes, some of the classic ones, like see. If, you remember reliving the days of like the English, Irishman, Scottish ones? Like I remember laughing at those, but I don't find them funny anymore. So, so what do you call that? Uh, you're like, ugh, oh, I'm already. Uh, this format died years ago. Yeah, when uh, when we were um, in Adelaide Airport, sorry, um, Perth Airport, flying to Adelaide, uh, the woman that was like checking what all in, what like we had a bicycle that needed put in, and there was going to be an extra charge for that. And we're going over the weight in one of the bags, and she was like, "Found out what comedians like, oh, where is she just fucking making small mm. talk? Found out what comedians going to the next festival, and then started like telling her a joke, like a really fucking long-winded shit gas joke, and then charged with our stuff being <laughs> overweight. And I'm like, don't eat fuckers, and then fucking fine yeah. us. Yeah. I'm like, you did a dick move to us. Like, yeah, it's all it's a little bit over, but you don't need to charge with. Yeah. And we were like trying to move stuff from one bag to the other. So that's how she had a captive for so long. Yeah. It's because we're trying to spread the weight, so we're not getting charged for the extra oh, weight. Then she's just doing her tight and five she, on you. She's doing a tight five on us, and I'm just like, we're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, we are not friends. You could totally like like overlook right. this charge. It's, it's like it's like, it's, it's like getting to pick the music that you get murdered to. <laughs> yeah. I would have fucking loved that joke and retold it if she just fucking cancelled the. Aye. Slapped her on the back. Yeah. Not awfully. So, in the, the fact that, like, you get told jokes or asked to tell a joke when you're a comedian um, because there's that many muggles in the world, mm-hmm. that's the main reason I don't reveal my job until it's kind of dragged out of me. Yeah, it. same. I'm so proud of what I do for a living. But I don't want to tell a stranger because it's, it's, it's also the level of expectation people have of you. Like, see, when I go to parties uh, and stuff, like, of, of like, a, a friend but they'll have some other friends that I've never met before or uh, normally happens whenever like I start dating a girl going over to 
meet her friends or whatever, the second I walk in, they all know I'm a comedian, or they they even know who I am, or they've been told that I'm a comedian, and then they either watch stuff on YouTube and just been like, and you can just see the expectation in the rise because yeah. there's two reactions: people want you to be hilarious all the time, or two, you get men who are threatened and intimidated by it, so they're just like, "So you're a comedian? Yeah." I'm like, mm. "Yeah." They've made us laugh yet? They've made us laugh yet? You're not fucking paying me, cunt. Nah. You know my audience. I felt like when I went to, when I went to the MMA gym in uh, in Perth, I like they knew I was a comedian, but I was never once funny in that gym. No, because I'm go I'm going to train. No, and then I was I just had this like crushing thing that they just all thought I was gush. No, and right. I mean I might be in their opinion, <laughs> but they haven't seen us. <laughs> They're basing it off nothing. Don't judge a book like, by how it wrestles. Yeah, this is this guy on the judo mats over here. <laughs> Cracking any jokes? I'm in fucking agony. My eyes behind me back. <laughs> I'm tapping out. <laughs> it's a tough gig. Uh, uh, that's absolutely fucking straight in. So, uh, just to go through all the six, muggles make you say please. Yes, muggles watch early morning chat shows and yes, muggles listen do. to radio. Yep. And, and muggles do not bring their keeper out on FIFA. Legends do that. Just legends. Only legends. However, it does make me touch, which is also muggly. I'm the muggle. <laughs> I should have just held You've up a mirror. yourself. Yes. Um, putting colours on your Facebook post. Stop yep. doing that. It was, it's, not, it's not nice. Stop luring us in. Yep. And uh, muggles tell jokes to comedians. Yes, they do. And finally, our final and favourite game, as always, your dad jokes. I had a proper giggle on before. You know, you did. You clearly got a good one in there, one you're proud of. <laughs> I mean, I think I fucking... I think I was just laughing too much now. That, anyway... Should we, get, uh, should we get them? Your dad's scared of lamps. <laughs> it's like the opposite of a moth. It's like the opposite of, um, I love lamp. <laughs> uh, thank you from uh, Anchorman. I wish I could remember his name. Steve, so could, Steve Carell. Steve Carell, yeah. Your dad's scared of lamps. No. And he's scared of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop screaming. <laughs> oh, when you're, yeah, when, your dog went, when your dog went to the vet and came back with lamps, you said he ran out of the house. Hit under the table. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> They've evolved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, that's the way I um, <laughs> You know them lamp, like the lamp off the Pixar mm. um, thing? We made oh, your lamp. dad screams, never seen Toy Story. Can't get past the opening credit. No. <laughs> so he had a lamp like that, and I, I pretended his lamp was gay, and we had to like, look at his crotch and stuff like that, and he got proper mad at us. <laughs> I don't know kids. <laughs> but like when I was looking back, I think he was getting mad as like for saying his lamp was gay. But I think he made me mad get mad because he thought I was flirting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude we're just mates. I don't know what your game is, yeah. But yeah I was, I was like, your lamp's paving on you to look like a cock. He was like, fuck off man. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, did dad jokes. Uh your dad, your dad has a pet toad that he keeps in his shirt pocket. <laughs> He feeds it the flies that he picks out your hair. <laughs> <laughs> when he's grooming us. Uh, your dad names his farts like hurricanes. <laughs> your, your dad runs into your room and jumps up and down on your bed on Christmas morning. <laughs> your dad's big plan is to become a millionaire is to make Heelys that are also sandals. He's on Dragon's Den next week. <laughs> <laughs> your dad kisses like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad shouts run for us, run at joggers. <laughs> what a muggle. Your dad Semyon's bigger than his heart on. <laughs> uh, your dad replies to texts from Domino's. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> they want to fuck off as well, by the way. Fucking did, did we sign up for them? How do you get the text off Domino's? I think you put your number in once and then fuck you for the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, uh, your dad heard, heard that a sneeze is a fifth of an orgasm, so spent all of his redundancy money on pepper. <laughs> uh, your dad's foreskin has eyelashes. Thought it tickled. <laughs> you winking at me? <laughs> After people sing happy birthday, your dad always likes to be the first person to shout out, hip hip. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone beats him to it, he writes their name down in his book. <laughs> and they're not invited next year. <laughs> <laughs> to his birthday. <laughs> uh, your dad can't lick his own nose, but he can lick mine and it's getting really annoying. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Human resources are getting involved. <laughs> inappropriate. Inappropriate behaviour in the workplace. Uh, you're, you're t- <laughs> that tickle you did it. <laughs> Make me dad's eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a podcast of me laughing now. <laughs> You're sat on the way to work listening to me laugh. Uh, your, da- your dad does the walking down the stairs trick behind the couch when there's no one else there. <laughs> just have to get some wine from the basement. <laughs> uh, whenever your dad drives past a graveyard, he rolls down the window and flips at the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker <laughs> Your dad got married with his shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your dad makes motorbike noises during sex. <laughs> and wears the helmet. <laughs> keeps, keeps stalling. <laughs> <laughs> keeps cocking it. I get ready to barrel. <laughs> your dad fly. That's for George Zack. <laughs> Uh, whenever your dad is at a Japanese restaurant, he puts the chopsticks in his mouth and pretends to be a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> whenever your dad's at a Japanese restaurant, he puts the chopsticks in his mouth and pretends to be a walrus, which is hilarious. <laughs> and then he bends over, shoves one up his ass, and says, Look, I'm a narwhal. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. <laughs> Your dad cuts pictures of himself out and sticks them over the features in all of your school photos. <laughs> <laughs> because he thinks he's my greatest teacher. <laughs> and he uses a black marker to colour out the rest of the children. <laughs> it's you and him. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Right, so uh, we are both doing shows in the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. You can come see me every day at 7pm at the taxi uh, down Riverside by Federation Square. Thank you to everyone who's come so far. So it's many been... people coming in from the podcast. Yeah. Well, there's not that many people coming in. My... <laughs> <laughs> the, the ones that are, are from, from, from the podcast. The podcast. <laughs> I mean, proportionally, yeah. not numbers. <laughs> but yeah. It's, uh, it's really nice to meet people off the podcast. No, it's, it's, so, it's so hard because they know so much more about us than yeah. we know about them. It's, a, it's such a like I don't realise how, how candid we are. Oh yeah, and how deep and personal we go. Just because well, yeah. it's just like it's just everyone just asks after Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so uh, yeah, you're, we're both on at seven o'clock, right? So choose one, right. pick, pick a team, team Muggins, team no. Dream. No, what we'll do is we'll get them, we'll meet them somewhere neutral. You stand on one side of the room, I'll stand on the other, and we'll both go. Your podcast fan. <laughs> Your podcast fan. <laughs> and whoever they come to first, get them. Yep. Cool. Let's do that. Let's meet tomorrow. Six thirty. Meet six thirty on. Aye. Right, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, your show's on at Sub Club every day. Yep. Um, and we will. Mondays. We're still working on getting this live podcast done, but it's starting to look more like a reality in Melbourne. So keep yeah, listening out for some that. Interest. Uh, apart from that, you guys great. We've got, we've got through this. It's hung over as fuck. And I am. Uh, yeah. I thought it was a decent episode. Yeah, yeah. I love. I I mean, let's, let's let's talk about this after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Muggins out. See you later, kids. <laughs>